Hey, here we are live in Pine Bush. We're going to talk about tapping maple trees or maple syrup. But before we even get into the woods and start talking about the trees, it's all about temperature. That's why we're doing it at this time of year. Look on the ground right here. This is the sun and what it's doing to the snow and the ice that was on the driveway. And then if you turn over here and you look at, because it's in the shade, whoa, I gotta be careful. I've fallen a couple of times, but this is pretty slick. But that's only a difference of 10 feet. So what's the difference in 10 feet? The sun. Oh, by the way, we all talk about Mother Earth. You know, be kind to Mother Earth. We're not really kind to Mother Earth what we're doing, pollute the water, pollute the air, whatever. Who's the father? Well, think about it a minute. Who, who takes and impregnates the earth with, oh, here's the clue, with their rays to make things grow? Ah, father, son. Father, son is up there. We can't really uh, mess up father, son. But if I was father, son, what we're doing to mother earth I think I'd be upset, but they're called solar flares. And the last solar flare, now I'm a little off the topic, but that's the way this whole talk is going to go because it's holistic. You can't step outside without feeling which way the wind is blowing. Every time you step outside, which way is the wind blowing? What are the clouds like? Whoa, there are no clouds. Back to father, son. The last solar flare was 150 years ago, according to YouTube. I wasn't here, but melted the telegraph keys shut. So what would happen if Father Son got really mad at what we're doing to Mother Earth? Ah, uh, watch YouTube. Okay, let's keep uh, moving a little bit here. We only have walked about maybe 500 feet, but I just wanted to stop here to point at, at the trees across the pond there. Except for the, except for the uh, trees, the evergreens, those evergreens were planted in 1963. And if you look back toward the house, they're, they're the same ones. And the reason that I know that is because I planted them. Uh, everything on that side that you see, all those trees, they are at the most, they're probably 30, maybe 40 years old. They weren't there. Uh, when you go outside, if you haven't grown up in an area, I lived here uh, since 1943. So I kind of know what was here and what's not here anymore. But if you look at those trees, if you just moved into the area, it's you'd think, oh, that's been a woods. Nope, that hasn't been a woods. There were cows here. Cows were all, all the farms. Most of the barns are gone. There's houses where the barns were. But cows walked through all these woods, which weren't woods. They were fields and they grazed them. And they ate all the small seedlings that were coming up. That's all new growth. So if you were here uh, 40 years ago, you'd say, wow, where, where are all the trees? Another thing I wanted to show you while we stopped here, this is that I walked through the snow. This is elderberry. Now we could, let me get out of the snow here. I think I had a knife. I do have a knife, my Cutco knife. As they always say in the YouTube videos, I don't work for Cutco, so I'm not getting any, they don't send me a free knife. But the nice thing about elderberry, this is small. They, they have a center uh, of them. And if you can look right here, this is very, very soft, very soft. So back in the day, oh, I just happened to, just happen to have a, uh, a spile. They call them they call them taps. If you watch YouTube, they talk about tapping a maple tree. Well, when you tap a maple tree, you put a spile into the maple tree. This is old. This is authentic. The the look of old things, whether it's metal or wood, that's called a patina. The patina makes it look real. So this was handmade. This was a spile. Could have been made out of a larger... Whoop! Let me break this off. It could have been made 
because he's the elderberry gets quite large. So they, you could actually take another uh, piece of maple. You could actually poke the center out, which was done here. Because back in the old days, they didn't have, uh, especially Native Americans, they didn't have drills that would reach that far. They did have drills. But this was probably all done by hand. And it would be a great thing to give to the kids instead of watching uh, television or all these video games. Say, here, Billy, come over here, Billy. M punch the center out of this and we'll make a spile. Whoa, nice. Oh, by the way, we're standing in the sun and I just have to stop. That sun is so warm right here. The ground is melting. Look, look, the ground is all melting. Now, remember when we were up there, it was ice? Oh, just the difference between the sun and the shade. See how I kind of ramble back and forth? But you, you cannot stand out in Mother Nature without being holistic. You, you take three steps, and if you're halfway aware of what you're doing, you'll say, wow, this is totally awesome. Okay, back to the spile. So Billy came over and he, he made the spile, punched the center out, gave it to his dad, and they looked at it. Nice. Okay, so now we can go and tap a maple tree. We have others here. Oh, these are my notes in case I forget to in case I forget to talk about something important. Okay, we're on our way. Hey, we haven't gone very far. Maybe another 200 feet. We'll get there sooner or later to the sugar bush, which where they uh, a couple of hundred years ago they actually tapped maple trees. That must have been exciting. But I wanted to point over there at a tree just over the Purple Martin houses. Purple Martin's uh, awesome bird. That's a whole nother story. But if you look, you see a tree. It looks kind of uh, golden or... John, you can chip in here anytime you want. Tell what it looks like. <laughs> yeah, it looks a little yellowish golden from here. Yellowish golden. Trying but, to keep it centered, but not doing so great a job. Yeah, well, what the, the point of me stopping here and pointing that out is you can identify trees, especially in the spring or in the fall, you can identify them half a mile away by the colors. And as I watch YouTube, they always talk, they always start off to uh, a lot of the videos. Let me show you how to identify a sugar maple. Well, they have a very distinct leaf. There are several maples. The sugar maple has the most sugar content and there's other maples that are around. The red maple, again, very easy to identify both in the spring and in the fall by the color of the buds and the leaves. But sugar maples are the same. Once you know what one sugar maple looks like in the fall, you can stand here and pick them all out, just about as far as you can see. So that's one way to identify a sugar maple, by the leaf, by the bark, but also by the color. When? The color in the fall, just like that uh, willow. That willow is very identifiable now because of the color. It's the only one. You could you could pick them out a mile away. Oh, by the way, talking about a willow tree, I never kept bees, but honeybees, from what I heard, that's the first tree that they go to in the spring because it has flowers. That's when they when they first come out of the hive, they look for those willows. Probably can tell by the color. Hey, here we are, we, we walked about another 10 feet, but again, if everything is holistic and everything's connected, how can you walk even three feet without finding something that is connected to what you just talked about? Back when I was about this tall, this snow would drift. There'd be drifts here, this, this tall. Well, why were the drifts here? Because all those trees, remember? They, all those trees, they're, they're not 30 years old. All those trees, I'm, I happen to be, by the way, 75, so 30 years, that's not that long ago for, for me. But all those trees weren't there. The houses weren't there. There was a farm here, the barn is gone. There was a farm in the corner. They rebuilt a couple of small, the, the, the main barn is gone. But the point of my story, from the mountain, to here, the wind would blow like crazy and all the snow would drift. And 
when snow drifts, when, when, uh, when it blows across the ground, all those bigger flakes, they break down into smaller flakes and they pack. What packs them? Nobody comes along and packs them. Mother Nature packs them. You'd walk on top of the drifts. They were solid enough to walk on top. It wasn't long ago they had snow fences on 302 and they had them, they had snow fence everywhere. They don't have them anymore. Eh, sometimes it's a little hazardous, especially up on 302 by the old horse farm where they have all these new trees and stuff. But all, all of that drifting snow has been prevented by the trees. Well, why are the trees there? No more cows. Everything's connected. Closer, believe it or not, we're getting closer to where the maple trees are, which we were originally gonna talk about, but I can't help but talk about this oak. This oak happened to grow in the perfect spot. When we moved up here in the early 40s, we started taking pictures. They were all black and white. Most pictures have this oak in. It wasn't quite as large, but this, you, you can talk about an oak tree. This is a white oak tree and you can talk about how to identify it. But I kind of like to talk about this oak tree, how it feels. Now, it's, you won't find that on YouTube. This tree has watched me walk by it, and I like, to, I like to personify it. When you personify something, you give it human attributes, which is really great because it, it, it makes things a little more personal. I've walked past this tree, and it's watched me walk past. Not really, but it has in my, in my feelings. This tree watched me walk by here since, it was, since I was that tall. And it's kind of special. It's in all the pictures. But why is this tree still here? Well, all, there were a lot of other trees. There were trees here. It was a big elm tree over there. It was like this Dutch elm disease got it. It died. This tree was lucky, it's a white oak. It has some babies growing around and probably scattered through the woods, squirrels and blue jays carry the seeds, acorns. But this tree was in the perfect spot. It's on a stone wall, but not just one stone wall, it's on a double stone wall. So when the farmers were clean, clearing all this land and this tree was much younger, they saw it. They could have cut it down because it's shading their fields. But I probably looked at it and said, ah, it's in a good spot. It's not really bothering anybody. And they left it. Now, there were stone walls going across these fields. Two above, they were, they're gone now. Why? Because stone walls, if, if a, a tree starts to grow by a stone wall, chances are it's gonna still grow. Even when the cows were grazing uh, all the trees around here, those trees growing by stone walls continued to grow. They took these walls out of here. I didn't want to really see them grow, but then, you know, farmers don't want to work with small fields. This tree was growing in the perfect spot and it continues to grow. But there's one thing here, if you look here, This lower, this lower branch was in a farmer's way. It, it, it stuck out in the field, re reaching for the sun. So he broke it off with a front end loader. And every time I look at it, I feel sorry for the tree. I wanna say like, I gotta cut that clean so you can heal itself. Okay, we're gonna try to find some maple trees, guaranteed. Okay, oh, uh, I was going to point out that willow tree. You can still see that willow tree from here with those. I just turned and now I made John take a picture of it to be there to tell it's a willow. And you won't have to be here in the fall to pick out all the sugar maples. Okay, so now we're finally, after all that talking and everything, but uh, that's, what, that's what it's about. It's not just about talking about a tree or talking about a stone or talking about whatever. We're at the maple grove. Well, this was a sugar bush. When we moved here, there were probably 20, 30 trees like this. There's only one left that's really in, in halfway decent health. We'll take a look at that. But 
as you, as you look at all these trees, most of them, most of them are about like this, maybe 40, 40 years old or so, because they have really good growing conditions here. They're quite tall and straight. There's no lower, no lower branches. To have lower branches, you need sun. And if you don't have lower branches, all your energy can go up to the tops of the tree. And if you look at these trees, I'm just going to walk over here a little bit. Hopefully I don't fall while I'm walking. That would be funny. Whoa, that's pretty deep. <laughs> Typical sugar maple. Nice and straight. And if you, if you stand where I am, it's perfect because this tree is looking for energy and it gets the energy from the sun. Fa don't forget father's sun. Father's sun is shining here. So all the branches, if I stand here, maybe John will but come over shortly. Doesn't have to come over right now. There's no branches on this side. If John comes over in a little bit and they're all, they're all leaning out in the field and they're soaking up the sun's energy. So when, they, when you tap a maple tree, you want the, you're, you're actually taking the energy, you're taking the sugar, you're taking the sugar, which has gone down from the branches and it's stored down in the ground. So this tree, if you want to take the sugar out of it, you want to take it out of the most actively growing part. So it would be on the south side, because if you look on the branches, most of this energy, the sugar, is going up on the south side. So John will come over here shortly and take a shot straight up this tree. Okay, John's in position now and he can look up the side of that tree. And, and again, if you're not looking for this stuff, you won't see it. But once you start to look at how trees reach out to the sun, father, son, gotta give father, son, we talk about mother earth, but very seldom do we talk about father, son, making this tree grow. Even these small trees, here's a small sugar maple. Look at the branches. This, look, look how this one here, see this one? It should have come out this way, but it completely turned. Same with the others. There's a scientific word for that. It's called a tropism. There are different tropisms. Some tropisms make roots grow down toward the center of the earth. Other tropisms, phototropisms, make trees grow toward the sun. But you don't need to know that. You don't need to know a fancy word, tropism, or any of that. All you need to do is be observant. Look at this tree. Oh, wow. All the branches are growing toward the sun. And you don't need to know a fancy name for it. Whoa, look at this. Somebody's tapping a maple tree here. Happens to be my son-in-law. He put these taps out. Uh, this is called dabbling. In a, and I, I equate it to, you're, you're in your house, and, and most people don't have large properties. But you look out your window and you say, we should have a garden. And everybody, the kids agree, oh, daddy, daddy, yeah, we could have a garden. And now it's especially uh, in vogue because gardens can provide you with fresh food and all that fresh food is better than the stuff that you buy and you can be more independent. But we don't have a big lawn, so we just have a little garden. Okay, a year goes by and you look out the window, Daddy, weren't we gonna have a garden last year? Yeah, well, uh, busy and we'll get to it. And another year goes by, so like, well, guess what? You don't need a big garden. You don't need a 20 by 20 or a 10 by 10 or even a five by five. Start out with one tomato plant. They're pretty, you can pretty successfully grow one tomato plant. And if you don't, try it again, but at least you started. So the big thing about gardens or even collecting maple syrup, you have to start. Now you can go on YouTube 
and you see all these big operations. They got these lines going through the trees and, you know, and they've invested quite a bit of money in all the, they have a sugar shack and all these fancy pans, some heated by wood, some heated by propane. But you look at that and say, ah, oh, that looks like a lot of work. Well, guess what? It's always a big garden. Just one, one tomato plant, one tree, just get one tree. I went on uh, YouTube because I knew I was going to be talking. But I said, oh, maybe I'll learn something, <laughs> which is fine. I always like to learn. But again, I'm holistic. I'm not uh, the things that I'm talking about. Probably even the personal things definitely aren't on YouTube. Father, son's not on when they talk about maple syrup and identifying a tree in the, in the fall. I haven't seen that yet on YouTube. They talk about the leaf and the bark, but just just to get out and start somewhere, just to start. So these files are plastic. I looked on YouTube, they're 20 some odd cents a piece. You can get them from Canada. 20, 20 some odd cents. And this is, I think, 30 cents. So let's, let's see what's happening here. Ah, see, it's still too cold. This should be running like crazy, but I can feel a cold air. John, you can feel it too, right? Yeah, it's cold today. Oh, it's, we're, we're in the shade and it doesn't seem to make a big difference. But remember back in the driveway when we were looking 10 feet away and it was melting and here there was ice, you could slip and break your neck. Well, it's the same thing in the woods. This woods has not warmed up enough yet to make this sap run. Plus the sun is slowly singing, uh, swinging over to the father son, sorry, father son, it's over, to, over toward the west. There's not a lot of heat here. This will run really well. Now, when you tap a tree, this is a really nice maple tree, uh, sugar maple tree. We could take a look at some red maples and there's, there's silver maples. They don't have the sugar content that a uh, sugar maple has. I wonder why they gave it that name, sugar or maple. Oh, that reminds me, you know, you, I remember being in school. Now, here we go again, it's all connected. <laughs> I never thought that when I took Latin, I remember my Latin teacher's name here in Pinebush. His name was Mr. Supo. <laughs> and I was too young to appreciate the value of the language. But now that I'm standing next to this maple tree, guess who I'm thinking about? I'm thinking about Mr. Supo, <laughs> my Latin teacher. I could still see him clear as a bell and I was a fool around kid in high school and I could care less. But guess what? This tree has a Latin name, Aesir. Aesir means maple, Aesir. So you have Aesir and because this is sweet, the second part of the name is Sacrum, Aesir Sacrum, like saccharin, you get the artificial sweeteners. So this is Aesir Sacrum. The red maple is called Aesir, well, what's red? Rubies are red, right? Rubies are red. Aesir Rubrum, that's red maple. So, okay, so I, I got four words that I know, actually three because a you would have caught me on that one. A Aesir is the same for maple, but rubrum and sacrum. And you know, it, when you learn about trees, if you, if you knew 20 different trees, you'd know all the trees in the woods just about, except some that are not in, indigenous. Indigenous means like, I, again, I don't like to use these fancy names. I rather say trees that have always grown here, not exotics. You, you could bring a tree in here and it'll grow where to it come from, China. Example, ginkgo tree. There's a ginkgo tree in pine bush right behind uh, Dr. Stewart's in there. It's a, it's a very hardy tree. It's very healthy and it came from China and it withstands all kinds of pollution. There you go again. So one thing leads to another. Ginkgo trees, they're exotics indigenous things that have grown here all the time. If you knew 20 names, you could walk out here and I call it feeling at home because when you know things and you, and you look at things and like, wow, this is, and you watch things grow and why they're growing. 
you feel at home here. It's like walking out and looking at a night sky and knowing, oh, there's Orion. Not just a bunch of stars or whatever. Oh, there's the Milky Way. No, the Milky Way's over here. And then you can get some more Latin names. Ursula, bear. Ursula Major, Ursula Minor, Big Bear, Little Bear, and the North Star, and on and on. And again, you don't have to be a Latin scholar, but at least you're aware of different languages or one language you could go on the other side of the world and say Aesir and uh, scientists would know, oh, maple, even though he's Chinese. Well, on and on and on. But now back to the maple trees again. Here's a, <laughs> here's a uh, sugar maple. It's got two taps. They say never tap a tree smaller than the bucket. Well, this is definitely not smaller than a bucket. It's got two taps, one on e each side. These are called spiles. And I actually, if I didn't drop them back there, John picked up my knife, thank goodness. I left my knife back there when I was talking about the, uh, the spile made out of the elderberry, which reminds me again, how do you find elderberry? Well, if you look on YouTube and all these health, health foods, elderberry is supposed to be one of the healthiest foods that you can eat, it's a berry. When I was a kid, there'd be elderberries, they're really dark berries. We would make elderberry pies, elderberry wine. And they were all over the place. And now guess what? There's more elderberry bushes than there ever were. But you don't get the elderberry, why not? The darn birds eat them all before, the darn birds eat them before they're even ripe. They'll eat them when they're green. So you'd have to cover them over with netting, and then the birds get caught, and that's a whole nother story. But uh, elderberry, you want, to, you want to find elderberry? You don't have to hunt now. Wait until it flowers. They have these great big white flowers. You could, again, you could spot them across this field, across the woods. So there's certain times you, you can identify trees or bushes by the flowers or by the color of their leaves in the fall or the spring. Okay, I, I still have notes in here. I don't think I'm gonna need my notes. I probably forgot something, but I didn't wanna get out here and not be able to be coherent, usually incoherent. <laughs> okay, I, I go to a lot of yard sales and I certainly don't wanna promote yard sales because you'd all be my competition. There's so much good stuff out there. But again, you have to go with some knowledge. These are spiles that I picked up at a yard sale. These aren't particularly old, but look heavy duty compared to the, to the plastic. Eh, you'll hit that with a hammer a few times and it costs 20 some odd cents, but if it breaks at the wrong time, it's a son of a gun. Uh, the, the one thing I did wanna show here, if I can find the other spile that was made out of the elderberry. Look how long this is. Now this is, quite long compared to this. So then you start to, anytime you see something, even, even if, you, if you see a tree or a stone wall, you say, why is it there? How did this tree get here? Why did they put the stone wall there? And that, what that does, it starts to make you think. And it's always good to think. This is long, this is short, this is commercially made, this is handmade. So if you put this in a tree, you only have to go in about an inch because most of a tree, and I'll show you a great example, most of a tree is just supportive dead tree. It's the only growing part is about this much around the whole tree. This much of a tree is totally alive and growing. The other part is for support. These are on the ground. Now, if you put this spile here, this plastic spile, and it was dripping out, it would drip, it would drip down the tree. It's not, it doesn't go out far enough unless you bought this tube. But check this out. If you put this in, then then you could put a bucket on the ground. And you wouldn't, and, and, and where when buckets were hard to come by, pails were probably made out of wood, just like barrels used to be made out of wood. Now they're made out of plastic, and before that they were they were uh, made out of different materials, but Sounds good. I didn't know what else to say, so I said different materials. <laughs> I forget what it was. But anyway, this this will get you far enough away from a tree 
so it can go into the bucket because they didn't have the plastic tubing. So these, these are different ones picked up at yard sales. They're just kind of neat to have, but this one's really special. This one was found in, we, when these large sugar maples, and I'll show you an example, there's some that have fallen down, but when these, we cut these down and we're splitting the wood, guess what we found? A spile that was left in there. And I don't know if they, I could, I guess back in the day when things were, you know, they had horses and wagons and you cut wood with a two man saw and it was really difficult. I would imagine that a spile was kind of important. So now I'm just thinking, just like I thought, like, why is that longer? Probably at the end of the season, they counted the spiles. Like, we were supposed to have 35 spiles. Ah, we left one in the tree. Well, guess what? They did. <laughs> okay, we're looking at a, uh, a typical sugar maple. It's about the size of the one that, we, that had the spiles in them. Uh, if you notice, it has a blue mark on the tree. There was a there was a guy, he was cutting trees for lumber. He came from Liberty and he was on a neighbor's property and he stopped by the house one day. See how everything's connected. <laughs> Can't talk, like if I didn't talk about this blue stripe, you'd say, what's that blue stripe doing on the tree? <laughs> I didn't put it there. So anyway, he was looking at a neighbor's property, but it was small. So he said, could I walk your property and you might want to sell some trees. I said, yeah, I said, I'm not going to, you're going to put your time in. I'm not going to uh, promise I'll sell you anything, but yeah, you're welcome. I, he didn't tell me about the blue, but that's okay. <laughs> That'll go away. So he walked the woods. He marked so many trees. It was like, I wouldn't have a woods left, <laughs> you know, and he wanted, he wanted the top dollar came like to $17,000, which sounds like a lot of money, but if he marked that big oak, I'd say, leave him alone. <laughs> so now, now when I walk through the woods, not this one in particular, but I, I, I'll walk through some big oaks in the other woods over here, and I'll say, don't worry, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> so, but again, that's, the, uh, that's that personal uh, feeling that I have. Why? I grew up here. That's why. But if you look at this tree, it fell. It broke off. All that, it was, a, it was a very, very weak crotch in that tree. And if you, if you look at these other, if you look around, look over here, what happens, see this one over here, John? The spiraling one. It, it has a piece broken off also, see that? See it? Well, the reason that they're, the reason that that's broken is it's a very, very weak crotch it goes it, this is this is John, this, I'm, I'm getting here. there this is the weak this is weak this this will split right down just like this one did all these trees are going up like this the strongest branch comes out at a right angle here's a good this is a this would be a if this if this continued to grow out like this that would be a very very strong branch that wouldn't break because it it would go deep into the tree. And if you cut this firewood 50 years from now, you'd see that, wow, that's hard to split. But all of these trees are reaching for the sun. So what happens, just like we saw the branch over on the side, it kind of turned out to the sun. Well, where's the sun? These trees are so crowded that they're all going straight up like this. And, and the, it's a shame, but that makes them very, week because they're all competing for the sun there's no side branches this tree didn't have any side branches because they never would have gotten a sun this tree's not stupid he's not going to say oh, i'm going to have side branches and then waste all that energy with no sun no so they they don't have any but the bad part they're all very 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 weak but stronger than me and they'll probably be here when i'm gone so that's mother nature. Now, when I was little again, and back in the early forties, in this woods, this was a sugar bush. There was no, no one had to tell you why, because there were probably 30 huge 
trees like this. And you could actually, and it's hard to believe, but you could actually see that the, the holes where the taps were, even though they were large. And when we cut them down for firewood, they would, <laughs> or they fell down uh, because they were starting to go on the tops, you would find spiles in them. I want to take a, a metal detector and just go around. It's, it's, it's not a money thing. Anytime you do things to make some money, it's no fun anymore. You got to do things for fun. It's even, even maple syrup. You start small and you tap that first tree and it's like, oh, this tastes so good. And then you get some more and more and you give some to your friends. And then you say, oh, I could, I could make some money on this. Well, yeah, but guess what? Then you have a lot of obligations. Like, don't you have any? It's just like chickens out of, out of eggs. Ah, oh, all my customers, they don't have, you don't need to worry about it. Get, get four or five chickens for yourself, a couple for friends if you want to give some away. Once you start making money on things, it becomes an obligation and a pain in the neck, <laughs> my opinion. If you're really, really good, I know there's other people up on the mountain they're good and they're, they, they do make money, which is fine. And I'm not putting those people down, you know, it, it, they, they enjoy it and they're really, really good at what they're doing. So it's not like I'm saying, what's wrong with those people? They're, they're, they're a lot better than I am as far as their ability to make money. But if you're a dabbler and you say, oh, I could, I could invest it. You better know what you're doing. <laughs> now this tree, there were like 30 of these here. It's a good den tree and the woodpeckers can come here. It's, it's, it's part of nature. It's, it's dying. It's, it, it did what it was supposed to do, but it's on the way out. I remember there was one over here. You can't tell it was here. It was years ago. Cut it down, it was dying. And a raccoon was in it. I'm like, holy smokes, I can still see him crawling out of one of the uh, hollow holes in the uh, tree. Okay, we'll go up here a little more. Okay, here we are. This is the last surviving tree of the original sugar bush. There were trees in here, I'm sure, at, when we bought the place in, in 1940, they were huge. They were probably already 100 years old. This tree, uh, the only way to tell how old this is would be to cut it down, which I don't tend to do and count the rings. But if you look, the, the point of looking at this tree, it's got, these, these branches are old. Do you see how they're coming out in all directions? They're going to the north, to the south, east and the west. They're, this tree, when this tree was growing, which is still doing, but this tree had a lot of space around it. So it could send out branches everywhere. If you look at over here, these trees, they're, so tall, they don't have branches except on the very top. So whoever planted, and I believe these trees were planted here and spaced on purpose so they would be more productive and have enough space to grow. But even, even if you look at the branches that are, have, are, are dead here, that's, that's the Northwest. They were growing out to the Northwest. They weren't all reaching out to the sun in the South, Southeast. So it's just a, it's just a, a, a neat lesson. And if you, if you take time to look at things and understand about trees and why they grow the way they do, sometimes they'll lean toward the sun. Sometimes like before, all the branches are reaching for the sun. And then we're, we're gonna stop uh, one more spot and just to take a look at a tree that I don't know why it's still growing, but it's right up here. This is, this is the last thing that I'd, I really want to talk about, probably more on the way back, but try to make it short. This tree, if you look up, there's, there's no branches reaching out to the sun. Say, well, it's in a great sunny spot. Here's the sun. Why isn't it reaching out toward the field? Well, if you look here, this was a, a huge part of the tree that broke off, and when it fell, this tree was probably thinking, oh, I should have had I should have had branches growing here. But if you if you did look up on this, it's, it's very hard to see. There are there is some new growth starting to reach out on that first on that first branch that's going 
toward the east, there's some very small branches that have come, came out on the bottom and they're completely going over to, to the field where there's some sunlight. But this tree looks very healthy all the way up to the top. And every time I go by it, number one, I worry about, is it gonna fall? Because it will fall. And it, it's survived some pretty strong winds that come through here. But look at, how can, how can it, all that nourishment come on the two sides, the whole middle is, is supportive, but, but there's, it's missing, it's missing so much ability to flow the sap up and down, it's crazy. And there it is. Again, it could live longer than me. I don't know, <laughs> but I hope it does. Okay, if you wanted to get started, remember I talked about, just forget about the whole huge garden that you never plant every year. But if you want to get started uh, with tapping a maple tree, I, I believe Thruway, the hardware store sells supplies, or you could go on, uh, the internet find it and all you need to do you can you can have a cordless drill a cordless drill and you only need to go in the living part of the tree maybe an inch inch and a quarter about well, that much ah uh, see the sap is the sap is running now but this isn't he didn't put he didn't put the spile in deep enough so anyway you just need to go in into the living layer the flow, they call it the phloem and the xylem, the living part of the tree. Just take a, find an appropriate, when, when you buy the spiles, you can, you can determine what size bit you would need and then just, just do one. And you start, you, it, you can't go wrong and you don't have to even boil it down until it's like, oh, I, I have to get a gallon of maple syrup or I have to get a quart. You don't even need a cup of maple syrup just to get started. All you need to do is put it on a... Now, when you boil maple syrup, the, the sap is sweet. If you go into a sugar house, it's actually sweet. That's, it's like uh, when, you, when you're cooking on a stove, if you don't turn on the, on the uh, fan and you're cooking bacon, that bacon grease is all over your kitchen. Well, it's the same thing when you're, when you're boiling maple syrup. There's a certain amount of sugar that's in the air. So you wouldn't want to boil large amounts of sugar in your kitchen. But if you just got this much, a little pan, get a pan this big, get the kids involved, tap the tree, get a bucket. Eat. If it's running really good, you could, you could probably zip tie a, a, a good plastic uh, freezer bag on there. Just get enough, let the kids see it, bring it in, put it on the stove, boil it. It doesn't have to be pure maple syrup, but you'll at least get a, a, a sense of like, wow, this is really sweet. And it got sweet because we boiled it. It's more concentrated. And then you can say, hey, next year, let's, let's, do, let's do two taps and we'll get a bucket and we'll do it outside on the grill. And then the next year and the next year, at least you have a start because if you never start, you'll never start. <laughs> so Rich, you were saying about the uh, tubing, you have to be careful with the tubing because if it's too long, Something about the deer? I just saw a shell. Ah, uh, uh, when they run tubing uh, commercially. Uh, I saw the shadow, I just wondered what it was. Oh, the hook. Okay. So anyway, when they do uh, in the mountains, they have tubing running from trees to tree. They have connectors, little T's and everything. And they, because they're on a the mountain, gravity carries all the sap, all the down to a sugar house. But if a deer goes running through the woods and if it's too low and a deer hits it, there goes your tubing. So they might start them up a little higher. I'm, I'm not exactly sure. I know uh, Bobby Mance, the Mances, hopefully they'll do a video <laughs> and uh, they'll, they can explain that. Okay. Because they are really good at what they do. Speaking about the height, does it matter how high it is where you put it, or is it not really important? I think it's just convenience. Okay. You know, there's, if the sap is here, it's going to be here. Guess what? It's going to be up there. Uh, that when they, they'll, they'll talk about a tree contracting, and it, it contracts and expands with the sunlight. Well, it's, it's a little more than that, too, because this sap is like water. Water is what they call cohesive. Water wants to stick together. 
So you can take a piece of wax paper, it's really fun for kids, take an eyedropper or put a couple of drops of water on a piece of wax paper, and then take a toothpick or a, or a piece of anything, fork. Once you, once you put that toothpick in the water and you bring it over to another drop of water on a wax paper, it sticks together. Water can actually run over a lip and, and come, it sticks together. You can take a glass of, of, fill it up with water, and then you can continue to fill it until it's above the glass. Why? Because those water molecules are sticking together and they call that a meniscus, which again, I don't, I'm not looking for fancy words. It's like, wow, it's above the glass. You wanna say meniscus, you can say meniscus. <laughs> Well, here we are in the sun. There's, oh, remember what I said? Oh, every, every time that you step outside, look at the sky, there's not a cloud in this sky. And the second thing, every time that you step outside, besides looking at the sky, which way is the wind blowing? Because the wind will bring you your weather. And I think it actually changed a little bit. It's, it's coming more from the Northwest. Most of the time we get the prevailing westerlies that brings us the weather from California and a storm comes and gradually the, the wind shifts and it'll come from the east and then we get the rain, the snow in the northeast, we get the nor'easter and then when it clears out like it's cleared out now, we start to get the, the, the flow from the, the west, northwest first and then the west. But that's not why I stopped here. I stopped here to point out all the little sugar maples in the woods over there, there are very few sugar maples. There are oaks, nice big oaks, red oaks, white oaks. But if, if we walked over there, you won't find any little ones. You won't find any, any oaks that are the size of these trees. Like, why? Well, the deer, I'm not sure. I don't know why deer don't browse all the maples, but when a maple tree is this big and there's no food, why don't they browse that? But there's so many small maple trees here and in the oak woods, you can't find an oak tree, red oak, white oak, this tall. They must just browse them down. I don't know. So if I was on YouTube, I'd say, send me a message on, click on the bottom and let me know. I'm done. <laughs>